Picture this. An empire so vast it spans three continents, its reach extending from the misty shores of Britain to the sun-drenched sands of Egypt. This is the Roman Empire, a civilization that has left indelible fingerprints on the course of human history. Born from the small city-state of Rome in the 8th century BC, the empire expanded its territories like a wildfire, engulfing the Mediterranean world and beyond. Its geographical boundaries stretched from the rain-swept highlands of Scotland to the arid deserts of Arabia, and from the icy rivers of Germany to the fertile plains of North Africa. At its heart was Rome, a city of marble and majesty, where emperors ruled and senators debated. It was a complex society, stratified into various classes from the patricians at the top to the plebeians at the bottom. The empire was a melting pot of cultures where Greek philosophers, Egyptian priests and Celtic warriors could rub shoulders under the aegis of Roman law. And it was law, along with military might and architectural grandeur, that made the empire an enduring beacon of civilization. Roman law formed the basis of legal systems across the globe. It was the Romans who gave us the concept of innocent until proven guilty, a cornerstone of modern justice. Their military prowess, embodied in the formidable Roman legions, allowed them to maintain peace and order across vast distances. Architecturally they were pioneers, the aqueducts that brought fresh water into cities, the roads that crisscrossed the empire, the grandeur of the Colosseum, these are testaments to Roman ingenuity that still stand today. The Roman Empire was a colossus, a powerhouse of politics, culture and military strength that stood for over a thousand years. It was a beacon of civilization in a world often darkened by chaos and conflict. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And so, the mighty Roman Empire too began its descent into oblivion. The first cracks in the Roman Empire's facade appeared during the crisis of the 3rd century. This was a period of severe instability and decline, the likes of which the empire had never seen before. The economy, once the heart of Rome's strength, began to falter. Inflation skyrocketed as the empire's coinage was devalued, leading to a large-scale economic depression. Trade routes which had once been the arteries of the empire, started to crumble under the strain of corruption and inefficiency. The once abundant grain supply from Egypt, the empire's breadbasket, dwindled, leading to widespread famine. Meanwhile, military pressure was mounting. The Roman legions, once considered invincible, were stretched thin across the empire's vast borders. External threats from barbarian tribes were constant, and internal threats from rebellious generals were just as dangerous. The might of Rome was being tested on all fronts, but perhaps the most destabilizing factor was the political turmoil. The empire saw a rapid succession of emperors, each with a reign more short-lived than the last. In the span of 50 years, Rome crowned over 20 emperors, most of whom met with violent ends. The political instability reached a climax when the empire split into three separate states, the Gallic Empire, the Palmyrene Empire, and the Italian-centered Roman Empire. It seemed as though the mighty Rome was fragmenting from within. This period of crisis was a stark departure from the Pax Romana, the long period of relative peace and stability that had preceded it. The crisis of the 3rd century was a time of chaos and uncertainty, a time when the empire was on the brink of collapse. Although the empire eventually recovered, the crisis had revealed its underlying weaknesses. These cracks in the empire's facade would only grow larger, leading to further crises and ultimately, the fall of the Western Roman Empire. The crisis of the 3rd century was just the beginning of the end for one of history's most powerful empires. As the empire reeled from internal strife, external threats loomed on the horizon. The late 4th and early 5th centuries were a tumultuous time for the Roman Empire. From the east, an ominous storm was brewing in the form of the Huns, a nomadic people known for their ferocity in battle. Under the leadership of their formidable king Attila, the Huns swept across Europe, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. Meanwhile, from the north, another threat was gathering strength. The Goths, a Germanic people who had long been in conflict with the Romans, were on the move. Driven from their homelands by the advancing Huns, the Goths sought refuge within the empire's borders. But tensions quickly escalated leading to one of the most significant battles of the era, the Battle of Adrianople. It was the year 378, and the Romans, underestimating the strength of the Goths, suffered a catastrophic defeat. The Eastern Roman Emperor Valens was killed in battle, leaving a power vacuum that further destabilized the empire. But the Goths were not done. 
In 410, they achieved what many thought impossible. Led by their king Alaric, they sacked Rome, the heart of the empire. For three days they looted and pillaged the city, marking the first time in 800 years that Rome had fallen to a foreign invader. These invasions, by the Huns and the Goths, shook the Roman Empire to its core. They exposed the empire's military vulnerabilities and highlighted the shortcomings of its leadership. The Battle of Adrianople and the sack of Rome served as stark reminders of the empire's diminishing power and influence. The might of Rome, which had once seemed invincible, was now under threat from all sides. The empire, already weakened by internal strife, was now facing formidable external threats that it was ill-equipped to handle. These invasions exposed the empire's military vulnerabilities and further destabilized it. In 476 AD, a young boy named Romulus Augustus ascended the throne as the last Roman emperor. He was just a teenager, still wet behind the ears, but suddenly found himself bearing the weight of an empire on his shoulders. This was no ordinary empire, mind you, but the Western Roman Empire, a civilization that had once stretched from the sun-kissed sands of North Africa to the misty moors of Scotland. Romulus Augustus's reign, however, was brief and fraught with challenges. His rule lasted less than a year, a mere blink in the grand scheme of Roman history. Yet it was during this short period that the fate of the empire was sealed. Romulus was a mere puppet with real power held by his father, the general Orestes. But even Orestes's military prowess couldn't save the crumbling empire from its inevitable fate. Enter Odoacer, a Germanic king and military leader. He had been serving under the Romans but his ambitions stretched far beyond his current station. In the same year that Romulus ascended the throne, Odoacer led a revolt against him. The young emperor and his father were unable to withstand the rebellion, and Romulus was eventually dethroned. Odoacer spared the boy's life but sent him into exile, effectively ending the line of Roman emperors. This event, the dethronement of Romulus Augustus, traditionally marks the end of the Western Roman Empire. It was a moment of profound historical significance. An era that had witnessed great emperors like Julius Caesar and Augustus, had now come to an unceremonious end with a young, inexperienced boy. Odoacer declared himself King of Italy, rejecting the title of Emperor, and thus the concept of a unified Roman Empire ceased to exist. The grandeur and might of Rome, the city that had once ruled the world, was now a thing of the past. With the fall of Romulus Augustus the once mighty Roman Empire had come to an end. An empire that had once been a beacon of civilization and progress was now just a memory, lost to the annals of history. While the Western Roman Empire crumbled, its Eastern counterparts survived and thrived. This isn't just a tale of survival, but of a civilization that blossomed amidst chaos, becoming a beacon of culture, politics, and military prowess. This is the story of the Eastern Roman Empire, better known as the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire was not merely an extension of the Roman Empire, it was a transformation. It was an evolution that sprung from the ashes of the old, and grew into something entirely its own. The Byzantine Empire was a fusion of Roman political structures, Greek culture and language, and Christian faith. This unique blend set it apart from its Western counterpart, allowing it to flourish where others faltered. Culturally, the Byzantine Empire was a hub of intellectual activity. It preserved and propagated the classical knowledge of the Greeks and Romans, while also fostering new advancements in law, art, and theology. The Byzantine scholars were instrumental in the preservation of Greek philosophy, which would later spark the intellectual fires of the Renaissance. Politically, the Byzantine Empire was a model of administrative efficiency and stability. Its centralized system under the firm grip of an emperor ensured continuity and order. This political structure allowed the empire to weather the storms of invasion and internal strife that ultimately brought down the Western Roman Empire. Militarily, the Byzantine Empire was a formidable force. Its armies, backed by superior tactics and technology, held the line against numerous invasions. The fortifications of its capital, Constantinople, were considered impregnable, repelling attackers for centuries, but even the mightiest empires have their twilight. The Byzantine Empire, after nearly a thousand years of existence, began to wane. Its territories were gradually lost to invasions, its political structure weakened by internal strife, and its economic power diminished by the rise of competing states. The Byzantine Empire, the last vestige of the Roman Empire, finally fell to the Ottoman Turks in 1453. However, its legacy lived on. Not just in the annals of history, 
but in the enduring influence it had on the cultures, politics and societies of Europe and the Middle East. Though the Roman Empire has long since fallen, its legacy endures. Even after the fall of this great civilization, the echoes of its influence reverberate through time, shaping the world we know today. Let's start with the law. The Roman legal system was one of the most advanced of its time. The principles of Roman law, such as the concept that one is innocent until proven guilty, form the bedrock of many modern legal systems. We see this in countries that follow civil law traditions which are directly descended from the Roman legal code, the idea of legal equality, the right to a fair trial, these are all gifts from the Romans. Next we have language. Latin, the language of the Romans, is the mother tongue of the Romance languages, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese and Romanian, among others. It has also significantly influenced English, providing the roots for many scientific, legal and medical terms. Then there's architecture. The Romans were master builders and their ingenious architectural designs and techniques have stood the test of time. The Roman arch, the dome, the use of concrete, all these innovations were revolutionary. Today we see their influence everywhere, from the humblest homes to the most grandiose public buildings. And let's not forget culture. Roman literature, philosophy and art have had profound impacts on Western civilization. The works of Virgil, Cicero and Ovid are still studied and admired. Roman philosophy, particularly Stoicism, has shaped Western thought. Roman art, with its realism and emphasis on portraiture, has influenced countless artists over the centuries. All these elements, law, language, architecture and culture collectively form the enduring legacy of the Roman Empire. An empire that has not only shaped the contours of Western civilization but continues to influence the global stage. The Roman Empire may have fallen but it has never truly been forgotten. Its legacy persists, a testament to the indomitable spirit of a civilization that once stood as a beacon of power, sophistication and grandeur. Today, we've journeyed through the rise and fall of one of history's greatest empires. An empire that was once a beacon of civilization, a powerhouse of military prowess, and an epicenter of cultural and intellectual achievements. We retrace the steps of the Roman Empire from its zenith to its inevitable decline. Our journey began with the crisis of the 3rd century, a period of political instability and economic downturn. The empire was besieged by civil war, plague and invasions, setting the stage for a period of decline that the empire would never fully recover from. Then, we sailed through the stormy seas of barbarian invasions, as the Huns and the Goths pressed upon the empire's borders. The Roman Empire once a formidable force found itself in a desperate struggle for survival against these relentless invaders. We then turned our gaze to the reign of Romulus Augustus, the last Roman Emperor of the West. His rule was brief and fraught with challenges, marking a poignant end to a once mighty empire. Next we cast our eyes eastward to the Byzantine Empire, the surviving eastern half of the Roman Empire. It managed to endure for another thousand years preserving many aspects of Roman culture and law. Yet, it too, eventually fell, signaling the definitive end of the Roman world. We concluded by exploring the enduring legacy of the Roman Empire, a legacy that continues to shape our world today. From our legal systems to our architecture, from our languages to our philosophies, the influence of Rome is deeply woven into the fabric of our modern world. The Roman Empire's fall teaches us that even the mightiest empires can crumble, but their legacies can endure for millennia. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey.